All right, it's been about a month since my last update. Let me show you guys a little bit of what I've been working on. As I said in my last video, this month was all about game feel or juice. Something I didn't mention in my last video was that I'm gonna be building this game in Game Maker. So I'm gonna be using a lot of features and functions in Game Maker to spruce up the feel of the game. A quick reminder, Caustic Bloom is available to wishlist on Steam, so head over there, wishlist the game to be notified at launch. Most of what I did can be categorized into one of three things. One, screen shake. One of the easiest things you can add to a game to make it viscerally connect to players is screen shake. So I went ahead and added two screen shake effects that can be triggered by various events. The first is a short, fast screen shake for immediate feedback. The second moves the screen a bit more, but it's slower and lasts a bit longer. This is for larger impacts meant to communicate weightiness. The combination of these two effects creates dynamic feedback that doesn't feel repetitive. I may expand that in the future, but I really like how it feels right now. Something to note is some people really don't like screen shake, so in my options menu, I'll have to have something that I can turn it off in case people get motion sickness or things like that. Number two, particles. A particle is like a game object, but much more simple. At least in Game Maker, you don't run any code, you don't run any collisions or anything like that. You just give it a trajectory and a speed and send it on its way. I spend an ungodly amount of time creating a system that compensates speed of certain particles based on the direction that they're headed to compensate for the gravity variable. So I wanted them to have a bit of an arc to them but I wanted them to all go the same distance, not affected by gravity. So there was a lot of math that had to go into that. I actually had to bring in my brother. I, I'll show you the notes. This is some of the notes he sent me while he was working on it. Once I saw these, I knew I was in way over my head. This is the solution we came up with for any nerds out there. So to spice up the green jelly mode, I added some fairly simple splatter particles to the various moves. These particles trail from the bullets, splatter on the floor when the bullets land, spray out from you when you use the melee attack or get hurt. It gives this mode kind of an acidic, slimy feeling that I really like. Particles for the fire mode were pretty obvious. Sparks and smoke. I modified some Game Maker presets for sparks and smoke. I like the sparks a lot, but I'm not certain about the smoke. While everything runs through a pixelation filter, I do get the feeling the smoke effect isn't very pixel arty. Should I try and replace this with pixel sprites of smoke, or what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if you think I should make any adjustments to that. Finally, with the purple color, which has this electric feel to it, I skipped the particle system altogether and instead opted for these little bouncy boys. Look at them go. They bounce around in random directions until they disappear. You can see these generate both at the beginning of an attack and when they impact an enemy. With all of these particles, you will also see them appear whenever the player tries to shoot without ammo, uh, runs into a wall, and a couple other interactions. Besides adding particles to the player, I also added particles to the enemies. I added blood to the bombardier beetles, leaves that fall from the jewel weed plant, and goo that splatters from the blue blobs. The jewel weed projectiles explode into little pieces, and the bombardier's shots have trails behind them, like the green jelly shot. All of these things add up to a more chaotic and, in my opinion, enjoyable experience. Number three, lighting. Everything lights up now. The bullets light up, the melee attack lights up. Enemies now have a lighting effect to indicate whether or not they've had a health blob stolen from them. Each enemy has one extra health that can be stolen from them by using the green melee. Once that extra health is taken, they lose their lighting effect. Similar to the screen shake, I actually have two lighting systems laid over top of each other. For larger ambient lights, I use a system that casts a large shadow over the entire room. Then I punch holes in that with lights that eliminate the shadows and bring things back to their natural brightness. I use this for framing rooms without having to worry about lights adding too much brightness or too much discoloration. For dynamic lights, I draw a circular gradient over the object I want to light up, and I draw it in an additive blend mode. What that means is instead of taking an average of the two values like it would with opacity, it adds a value to the background value, which makes it act more like a actual light source. I can then add these lights to anything I want to have a colored or bright glow to them. Another thing I did this month was fix my shadows. As you can see in my first devlog, I have some shadows here that were a little bit funky. This is because my shadow casting code didn't account for longer objects very well. My original plan was to write up some code to cast shadows differently based on the height of the object, the size of the collision box, and some other parameters to get a more realistic lighting system. And while I was working on that, just for fun, I tried putting blurry dark rectangles underneath things. And that looked better. So I took my fancy shadow system and I threw it in the trash and went on from there. 
Sometimes the best solution is just the simplest, and I think that's the case here. So after all these changes, the game seems to feel a lot better. Now, I wanted to see if it wasn't just feel, I wanted to see if this actually affected the marketability of the game. So I recreated my Steam ad using the same exact format. All I did was put in different gameplay clips. Then I ran two Facebook ads, one with the original Steam trailer and one with the modified new Steam trailer. And here are the results. Yeah, they're basically exactly the same. Yeah, I was expecting them to be a lot better than that. But uh, I guess game feel really doesn't affect the marketability of the game that much, at least the stuff that I did. Uh, maybe there'd be other things that could add some juice to the game. If you have any suggestions for ways you think the game could be juiced up more, let me know in the comments. But uh, for now, that's, uh, that's all the juice I've got to add to it for now. One last thing before I go, I have a Discord now. I actually started it a little while ago, uh, but I haven't repped it anywhere. Uh, so right now it's just a couple friends and one guy uh, that just found the group. So uh, hi, other guy. That's very cool of you to join. Uh, hopefully you guys join as well and come interact, say hi. Uh, and that's all for now. Thanks. Oh, and look at, look at the doors now. The doors, the doors open now. Look at that. The little, the little doors open. Wow.